Kesh, a good start to this series. Um, take us through your observations and just how things went down. Yeah, obviously it was really nice to start the series uh, with a win on our belt. I think it was really important for us to get that. I think from the start, you know, Barras did really well. Quinny and Riza set the foundation for us. And, you know, Aiden and David played a sublime innings at the end and uh, had a really good partnership to take us to the total we got. I thought on uh, when we came on to bowl, uh, the bowlers in the power play set the tone for the game. I think restricting to Sri Lanka to 36, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the power play is almost unheard of in the subcontinent. So, you know, full credit to them. And then Bjorn, Shamo, uh, Dwayne, uh, KG and Anna was superb in finishing the game off in the, in the manner that they did yesterday. A really good um, performance by the batting and the bowling unit, which is always really good to see um, both units coming together. Let's talk about the fielding a little bit. Yeah, it's surprising that you say that. Obviously, uh, I had a misfield and there was a few other drop catches that went down. I don't think it's from a lack of uh, effort or anything. It, it was a bit tough in terms of the field being uh, quite slippery. I like, Dewey last night and the ball slipping from the guy's hands, but no excuses. I think, you know, we want to be clinical going forward. So, you know, it's something that we have spoken about and addressed and we hope to rectify it in the remaining two matches in the series. And when you see those kinds of conditions with the dew and all of that, um, how do you then, you know, what, what steps do you or processes do you put in place to, to almost mitigate those conditions? Yeah, I think, uh, especially from the fielding point, is to try to get behind the ball a lot quicker than we, what we used to. Obviously, when, when it is dry, you've got a little bit more time. Uh, and then obviously make sure that the ball is in your hand before you decide to throw the ball and things like that. As you know, the ball is quite slippery when there's dew on. So, you know, it's just the smaller moments where you take a little bit more time and try to get uh, more accurate in terms of the throwing and things like that that will help the situation. The team was extremely intense. There was a great intensity about and intentionality about the way that you were going about your business. Is that part of that mental shift and that Proteus way that you guys have been talking about? Yeah, definitely. I think it's really important to show that intensity and energy. Uh, whilst we were intent, uh, showed intensity while we were bowling yesterday, I think we could have been a little bit more energetic. Um, but, you know, having said that, we crossed over the line. But, you know, it's important that we manage ourselves. It's really hot in terms of the humidity here in Sri Lanka. So, you know, my, th that might be one of the reasons why the guys were a little bit more flattish than what we used to. And, you know, it's been a long tour so far in terms of being trained. But there's no excuses. I think, you know, we understand what's at stake for the remaining two games. And we want to we want to be as clinical as possible come the next game. It was your debut match. You also captained on, on debut. And you had a victory on debut. So, so, so many things for you to celebrate all in one. How are you feeling as Keshav Maharaj? Yeah, I was really excited, firstly, to go on the uh, T20 colours uh, yesterday. It means a lot to me. I've always wanted to play all three formats for South Africa, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity that I've been posed. Then to be thrown the captaincy, I uh, <laughs> always said I want to captain South Africa. You know, fortunately enough, I get to do it on my debut. Uh, I think, you know, the, the personnel that I have around me have made my uh, life a lot easier on the field and off the field in terms of, you know, managing situations with tactics and implementations and stuff. So, you know, I think it's a collective team effort. I may be a leader on the field, but we have a lot of leaders in their own right and leading their own way, which makes my job a lot easier. And looking to the next match, um, how do you guys seal this, this series and make sure that, you know, you've got a series victory that's going to be good for the confidence going into the World Cup? I think it's important to stick to our basic, uh, basics and you know repeat the good that we did in the previous game but obviously try to work on the negatives that, that did come out of the game the other night. I think it's important that from a confidence point of view for this team in preparation for the, the T20 World Cup ahead to make sure that we you know we take care of the series uh, uh, the series victory and the series win come the next game. But you know the Sri Lankan side is known to bounce back and they're a really good side and a, formid a formidable side. But you know, we just got to stick to our basics and hopefully we come over the line come the next uh, T20 international game. Are you concerned at all um, at the seemingly um, frequent manner in which you know the, the batting unit tends to have collapses in, in, in little pockets? Yeah, I think it's something we, we did address uh, and it's starting to get a bit better but obviously we need to try to uh, mend that a lot quicker uh, than taking the time, especially when you come to the World Cup, you know, it's, it's basically like a knockout uh, situation where you can't afford to adapt too late. So, you know, we give credit where it's, I think the boys have done really well in, in someone sticking their hand up when we have had those collapses, but you know, it is something that we've addressed and we need to work on and start getting a lot better, a lot quicker as well. Happy to have Quentin de Kopp back? Yeah, Kuni is always a brilliant player. I think you can see 
uh, the, his persona on the field and, and what he brings to the party. I think, you know, not only as a batter, but, you know, as a wicket keeper, he's one of the best in the world and a, and a person that leads the game really well, which, you know, it's something I can feed off when leading the side. He's always, uh, you know, in my ear, giving me thoughts and processes, which is really good. Uh, and I'm very grateful to have someone of his caliber in our team. Also, another positive, the top three setting a massive foundation for you guys to be able to kick on. Yeah, I think if you look at the subcontinent, that's very crucial, especially to take care of those, those first 10 overs and have wickets in hand at the end. We just saw the wickets in hand, what David and Aiden could, could do with such a, a, a good foundation that was set. So I think it's really important that we take care of that and the top three or four genuinely take care of those 10 overs to let the middle to low, uh, the, the middle order to come and take care of the end and you know, try to capitalize on that. And also your spinners doing an absolutely amazing job. Are you very happy with the with the spinners that have been selected, particularly when you look forward and towards the World Cup? Yeah, I think you know we've got an abundance of spinners nowadays compared to back about five, six years ago, where spinners were more likely to be sort of uh, pushed aside because of the, the fast bowling mentality. But I'm glad that there is a wide array of options that are in the spinning attack and we've got you know a lot of variety we've got the world number one t20 bowler at the moment in our team and he's been exceptional since the start of this tour you know Pion's done well george linda has done exceptionally well you know so it's really good to see the depth and uh, you know the guys are really taking the opportunity they're using the condi using the conditions to their advantage and and they're just being smart uh, being smart about their business which is really pleasing to see Let's talk quickly about leadership and, and your philosophy on leadership. Um, a lot of people have a lot of really good things to say about you, particularly you know in your leadership role at the Dolphins. Um, what is your approach when it comes to leadership and, and the way that you go about using the players around you? Yeah, I think I'm a very open-minded captain. I think one thing I've learned amongst the years playing under certain uh, you know uh, previous captains and things is that You've got to be open-minded and rely a lot on the players around you to feed you information as well amongst your own plans and thoughts simply because as a captain you are so focused on other things that you forget some certain important facts and, and guys you have your senior players and, and also the junior guys they bring on points that you don't see and you know it just opens your eyes um, one thing I do demand when I am captain is a lot of energy and intensity on the field I believe that's the best way to bring out uh, the characters in the team and see see the bowlers come out on, on the better side of things. I think you know it's really important to show that. I think also body language for me on the field is really important because you do portray a strong message to the opposition and that we have to fight. You're a big family man as well, very close with your family. Um, how is being in a being so far away from them for extended periods of time, how does that how does that affect you? Yeah, it's, I'm a big family person. Uh, I love spending time with, at home with the family and fiance and things like that. Um, it is a bit tough. Well, not a bit. It is very tough <laughs> uh, being in a bubble and obviously not being able to have them on tour at times. Um, so yeah, you make do via video calls and you know constant communication. Obviously, there's certain things that transpire uh, whilst you're away that you know it, it does bring you down a little bit. But then you you know you just look forward to that time when you do go home and you know being there with your family and giving you that mental break that you do require. But you know, with the way that technology has gone, I know the person may not be there in physical presence, but you know, the fact that you can see their face over a video call and stuff, it does ease a little bit of the, the mental stress that you do deal with whilst on tour. How much does being a protea mean to you that you're able to go away from home? and spend this extended period of time away from home like how much does it mean to you then to be here because it's this that is the reason why you're away from them yeah i think you know as a youngster you dream about playing for the coaches and unfortunately in the times that we're living in um, you are an ambassador for your country through, through the mental strains and and toughness uh, that you have to deal with whilst being away and buy your bicycle bubbles but i think it's really important to be able to do something you love and see another part of the world. I think for cricketers, we don't ever take that for granted. Um, you know, like I said, we could be sitting at home, isolated in terms of uh, you know not being able to travel or not being able to see other parts of the world. But like I said, you get to get to see different parts of the world and do something you love. So you know, very grateful for that opportunity. And yourself and your fiance, um, how are the wedding plans going? <laughs> yeah, so obviously. <laughs> We've had, actually had to have our wedding postponed uh, twice due to the, the pandemic right now. But, you know, we are planning and scheduling a, a later date once the fixtures come out. You know, we'll have more clarity on that. Uh, 
Yeah, it's been a, a tough two years from that point of view in terms of not being able to tie the knot completely. But you know, I still very much feel married to her. We live together, and yeah, life will just be wearing an extra wedding band, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, I suppose when the time is right, that will happen. And come by. Cool.